Hey, how's it going everyone? Blavadati Cuber here. Today is November 7th, 2021. And you might be wondering, oh, what the heck does that mean? November 7th, 2021? That's so weird. Basically, today is this end of the daylight saving time. So basically the clocks go backwards by an hour to like make the sun rise at like normal times, I guess. But it's cool because it enables you to like do time travel solves, which is like super cool. So I did this a few years ago for like a few different years where I solved Rubik's cubes during when the clock changes by an hour and then you get a negative time for your solve. So I did this on three by three and my personal best was like negative 59 minutes. And then today I'm gonna be the first person, I think. I'm not sure if anyone's done this before, but hopefully I'll be the first person to do this with the four dimensional Rubik's cube. So I haven't really showed like what method I used before except for on my second channel. So go to subscribe to my second channel, Blobinati Cuber 2. Um, basically, I use this cool room method thing. All right, so the yellow center has lots of yellows attached. So I'll just spin that over there, put this there, and then that's like the yellow blue piece right here. And then we just um, find this piece and then put it in there. And then that's like a two by two by one by one block. All right, and then I just insert this last edge here and you can see in the bottom here, I've built the yellow blue cross of the roof first blocks. And then I've built this F12 pair here. So this is the blue, orange, purple, yellow F12 pair. I'm gonna slide that onto the blue cell. Then we're gonna find where it needs to go to be inserted, which is right there. And we'll just insert that with like a normal are you our prime you prime stuff? Ah, and now that we have this um, pair made right here, we can do this really cool trick that's impossible in three dimensions. So the blue is up here. This is the blue, yellow, red, purple pair. It needs to go into this slot right here. What we can do is instead of putting it, like flipping it, putting it on the blue side and then putting it in, we can simply just rotate this like over there, then slide this down with one move and put it back. And that's a three move insert. So that's super cool. All right, this should be the last F2L pair of the uh, second block. So, so we'll just put that over orange right here, and then we'll do a U2, and then R, U prime, R prime. Then we have to do U with RKT, and there we go. So we've built first block and second block, but here is where it gets cool because like the rest of the solve is kind of different from Rue, and it's fun. We're gonna do an anti soon from this angle, so it's like R, U2, R prime, U prime, R, U prime, R prime. That's gonna get a lot of corners oriented. Now we just have three corners left unoriented. Now it should be an anti soon in the bottom here, so now if we go like this, 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 yep, that is an anti soon. So I'll do another anti soon, but a different one with RKT which goes like this, R, U2, R prime, U prime, R, U prime, R prime. And that oriented the corner, so all that was just orienting the corners, okay? Now we still have to permute, all right, so we're gonna do R2, boom, B2, that's gonna get these green corners for us. I'm gonna put those over there. Then we're solving these green corners on the bottom, so let's see like that. All right, so we've solved the bottom layer. And for the top layer, we have to orient these. And do I know the CLL? I think I do. I think it's just F and then R, U, R prime, U prime, then F prime. Yeah, but here we have a thing called RKT parity, if you don't know what this is. Um, so basically like this top layer is off by a U2. So that's annoying, you have to learn a special 4D alg for that, but it's not too bad. Um, the best one is nine moves, but I'm stuck using this 11 move one because my brain is big doo-doo. Now that that one's there, we just, we literally just do a U-perm because why not? And then we have this piece and this piece, and then we're just gonna insert left right edges before doing edge orientation because that is the most optimal way. Boom, boom, boom. You can do a cool three move insert like that. This part's like my favorite part of the entire solve. Solving these left right edges is so fun. So we solved the entire left right now. Now we just need to solve the edges on the right. All right, so that was the very last um, LR edge. So now the entire left and the entire right 
of the cube is solved and all that's left is the M slice. Because it's four dimensional, the M slice is three dimensional, meaning we can just rotate like this and solve it like a 3D Rubik's cube. So over there's the yellow center. Let's put that, whoops, let's put that on yellow and then rotate like that. And now we've kind of reduced it to 3D. So if you notice these like corner pieces have one, two, three colors instead of four. So it's kind of reduced, but there's some extra parity. So we'll just watch out for that. All right, so I've solved the yellow cross, yellow pink, yellow red, yellow purple, yellow orange. Now it's time for some cool F2L, except the pairs can be mirrored because of course they can. Cool, so that oriented the edges. And then for the corners, we have a cursed case. So this is more fun things that can happen with Rue in 4D. So to orient the corners of solving the M slice with CFOP, see how this corner is twisted this way, this corner is twisted that way? Impossible on a 3D cube, but on the 4D cube, you can kind of just do a setup move like um like this. And that turns it into a possible case. This one being the L case. These two corners are mirrored with each other, so let's go like this, and then I know a cool algorithm that'll like unmirror these. Mm, boom, boom, smack, boom, 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 boom. Boom, 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 smack, boom, boom, boom. And there we go, we've premiered the corners right here, um, but they are off by a little bit, so uh, we we'll just fix that later. So let's see, so what do we have? So now we have this case, which is just like the U perms, just, I mean, the U layers off by a little bit. So to do this, we kind of just rotate and then kind of just fix it like that. And there we go, so that's the example solve. For speed solving, I guess I'd be aiming for like negative 40 minutes-ish. If I get like less than negative 35, I'll be happy. So see you guys then. Okay, it's 1.57 a.m. I'm gonna scramble this at 1.58. So I start at 1.59 and it goes back to 1 a.m. and I'm super awesome. I have my speed running timer up here. You can't really see the time, sorry about that, but just trust me. It's gonna be awesome time travel. Oh, it's 1.58. All right, all right. Okay, I'm super excited. Let's wait for it to turn to 1.59. Okay, it's 1.59. All right, we're going, we're going. Okay, so the green, green, red, and then white, green, red. Where, where was that? Ah, uh, yes, the time went back to 1 a.m. Awesome. Okay, that's the cross done. Cool. All right, so now f to pairs with white, green corners. Okay, red, green, pink. All right, that's first block done. Second block. All right, so we need white and blue. Purple, blue. Oh my God, the pair is already made. What? Second block done. Okay. CMLO. Okay, and then we just have those two and those two, which is perfectly set up. Oh, no way. Okay. R, U2, R2, U prime, R2, U prime, R2, U2, R. Cool. Down. No RKT parity. Yes. Okay. And then just um, left and right. So, oh shoot, I forgot to end CML C. Whoops. Okay, that split's gonna be very inaccurate. <laughs> but whatever. Kind of inefficient. But you know, whatever. It happens. Especially to me. Um, okay. And now just permute like a three by three. Yeah. Okay, uh, yellow cross probably. It's flipped again, that's awesome. All right, insert it from the back right here. Okay, OLL and PLL. Oh my God, I know this OLL. Okay, R, U, R prime, U prime, R prime, F, R, F prime. Yes, that's gonna save me like so much time. Oh, I'm actually so close to my real PB. This is awesome. And then just, just a new print. Oh, was it this one or was it the other one? I don't know. It was this one. Yes, yes, yes. No. Uh, uh. Yes. Yes. I actually beat my PB also, I think. I'm pretty sure my PB was 20 minutes and 24 seconds. And I got 20, 23.72. <laughs> and 668 twists. Last PB I did, it was like 712. I can't believe I broke my PB also. 
All right, everyone, it's the next morning. I got a good sleep. Like I lost many hours of sleeping. That's okay. Um, so I've done the math. Basically, I started the solve at pretty much exactly 1.59 a.m. Then my real time solve was 20 minutes, 23.72 seconds. And that made me end the solve at 1.19, 23.72 a.m. <laughs> So, when you calculate the distance and then you have to do the other minute also, that becomes a negative solve time of negative 39 minutes, 36.28 seconds. So, I beat my goal of being um, sub negative 35, so that's good. And I was almost sub negative 40, <laughs> so, that's, so that's cool too. And I broke my real time PB and my speed solving move count PB. Uh, but yeah, so if no one else has done this, then I'm officially the fastest ever um, four dimensional Rubik's Cube solver because I solved it before I scrambled it. So yeah, um, daylight savings time, you can do some pretty cool time travel tricks. I guess in spring, uh, when we march forward, we set our clocks forwards by an hour. You could do like the, the fastest hour long solve if you wanted to, but that feels weird. Why would you want to be like an hour? I don't know. But yeah, thanks for watching guys and I'll see you in the next video. <laughs>